Hello, we are back with a new section of this video course, Web Services. In the previous section, we dived into testing. In this section, we will look at a number of videos for creating RESTful web services and also serving static or dynamic content. We will start by implementing web services with WSGI and using the Flask framework for RESTful APIs. We'll then pass the query string, URL path, and JSON request. We will also learn to make REST requests with URL lib and see how to implement authentication for web services. Let's begin with the first video of this section that deals with implementing web services with WSGI. In this video, we will import needed modules, objects, and use HTTP status class. We will also import or define the underlying classes and create objects that are shared by all sessions. Lastly, we will define the target WSGI application as a function and build a server that runs the WSGI application. Providing web services involves solving several interrelated problems. There are a number of applicable protocols that must be followed, each with its own unique design considerations. The core of web services is the various standards that define the HTTP. HTTP involves two parties, a client and a server. The client makes requests of the server, while the server sends responses back to the client. The relationship is highly asymmetric. We expect a server to process concurrent requests from multiple clients. Because the client requests arrive asynchronously, the server cannot easily distinguish those requests that originate from a single human user. The idea of a human user's session is implemented by designing a server that provides a session, token, or cookie to track the human's sense of current state. Many web applications will have several layers. The layers can often be summarized into three common patterns. A presentation layer might run on a mobile device or a website. This is the visible, external view. It also has an application layer, which is often implemented as web services. This layer does the processing for the web or mobile presentation. And the third one is persistence layer, which handles retention of data and transaction state over a single session as well as across multiple sessions from a single user. This will support the application layer. A Python-based website or web services application will adhere to the web services gateway interface or WSGI standard. This provides a uniform way for a fronted web server such as Apache, HTTPD, NGINX, or GUnicorn to use Python to provide the dynamic content. Python has a wide variety of RESTful API frameworks. In some cases, however, the core WSGI features are all we need. How can we create applications that support layered composition following the WSGI standard. Let's see this. The WSGI standard defines an overall framework for composable web applications. The idea behind this is to define each application so that it stands alone and can be trivially connected to other applications. The overall website is built from a collection of shells or wrappers. This is a bare bones approach to web server development. WSGI isn't a sophisticated framework it's a minimal standard. The essence of web services is the HTTP request and response. A server receives requests and creates responses. The HTTP request includes several pieces of data, the URL for the resource. A URL can be as complex as this one. There are several parts to a URL. First is the scheme, HTTP colon. This ends with colon. Next is the host www.example.com. This is prefixed with a double slash. It may include an optional port number. In this case, it's 8080. Then comes the path to the resource. Slash character in this example. The path in some form is required. It is often more complex than a simple slash. A query string prefaced with a question mark. In this example, the query string is just the key query with no value. A fragment identifier prefaced with hash. In this example, the fragment is fragment. For HTML documents, this can be the ID value of a particular tag. 
the browser will scroll to the named tag. Almost all of these URL elements are optional. We can make use of the query string or the fragment to provide additional format information about the request. The WSGI standard requires that the URL is passed, the various pieces put into the environment. Each piece will be assigned a separate key. One of them is methods. Common HTTP methods include head, options, get, post, put, and delete. It also contains request headers. The headers are additional information that support the request. Headers are used, for example, to define the kind of content that can be accepted. When we have the attached content, a request might include input from an HTML form or a file to be uploaded. The HTTP response is similar to a request in many ways. It contains response headers and the response body. The headers will include details such as the encoding of the content so that the client can render it correctly. If a server is providing HTML content and is maintaining a server session, then the cookies are sent in headers as part of each request and response. Now let's move on to the code file, which we'll be using in this video. WSGI is designed to create application components that can be used to build larger and more sophisticated applications. A WSGI application generally acts like a wrapper, insulating other applications from bad requests, unauthorized users, or unauthenticated users. To do this, each WSGI application must follow a common standard definition. Each application must be either a function or a callable object which has this signature. The environ parameter is a dictionary that includes information about the request. This includes all of the HTTP details, plus the OS context, plus the WSGI server context. The start response parameter is a function that must be called prior to returning the response body. This provides the status and the headers for the response. The return value for the WSGI application function is the HTTP response body. This is generally a sequence of strings or an iterable over string values. The idea here is that a WSGI application might be part of a larger container that will stream the response in pieces from the server to the client as the response is being built. Since all WSGI applications are callable functions, they can be composed easily. A complex web server might have several WSGI components to handle details of authentication, authorization, standard headers, audit logging, performance monitoring, and so on. These aspects are generally independent of the underlying content. They are universal features of all web applications or RESTful services. Let's look at a relatively simple web service that emits playing cards from either a deck or a shoe. We rely on the card class definition, which we have defined earlier. Here's the core card class with rank and suit information. We've defined a small base class for playing cards. Each instance of the class has two attributes, rank and suit. We've omitted the hash and comparison method definitions. This class would need a number of additional special methods, but in this video, we will avoid those complications. Here, we've defined a to underscore JSON method that is handy for serializing this complex object into a consistent JSON format. This method emits a dictionary representation of the state of the card. We also need a deck class as a container of card instances. An instance of this class can create the card instances as well as acting as a stateful object that can deal cards. Here's the class definition. The create underscore deck method uses a generator to create all 52 combinations of the 13 ranks and four suits. Each suit is defined by a single character. The example spells out the Unicode character names using slash n with values in parentheses sequences. If a value of n is provided when creating the deck instance, the container will create multiple copies of the 52 card deck. This multi deck shoe is sometimes used to speed up play by reducing the time spent shuffling. Once the sequence of card instances has been created, it is shuffled using the random module. For repeatable test cases, a fixed seed can be provided. 
The deal method will use the value of self.offset to determine where to start dealing. The value starts at zero and is incremented after each hand of cards is dealt. The hand size argument determines how many cards will be in the next hand. This method updates the state of the object by incrementing the value of self.offset so that the cards are dealt just once. Now, let's see one of the ways to use this class to create card objects. Move to the Python command shell, open the code file, and run the module. Let's import the essential packages and write random.seed. To create a sensible test, we provided a fixed seed value. Now, write deck is equal to deck. The script created a single deck using deck. We can now deal a hand of five card instances from the deck, so let's do it. Awesome! Now, in order to use this part of web service, we'll also need to produce useful output in JSON notation. Here's an example of how it looks. We've used deck.deal5 to deal a hand with five more cards from the deck. The expression list card to JSON function for card in deck.deal5 will use the toJSON method of each card object to emit the small dictionary representation of that object. The list of dictionary structure was then serialized into JSON notation. The sort keys is equal to true option is handy for creating a repeatable test case. It's not generally necessary for RESTful web services. As you click Enter, you'll see this output on your screen. Now, let's get back to our code file. You must import needed modules and objects. We use the HTTP status class because it defines the commonly used HTTP status codes. The JSON module is required to produce JSON responses. We also use the OS module to initialize a random number seed. You can also import or define the underlying classes, card and deck. Generally, it's a good idea to define these as separate modules. The basic features should exist and be tested outside the web services environment. The idea is that web services should wrap existing working software. Next, we create objects that are shared by all sessions. The value of deck is a module global variable. We've relied on the OS module to examine the environment variables. If the environment variable deal app seed is defined, we'll seed the random number generator with the string value. Otherwise, we'll rely on the built in randomization features of the random module. After this, we define the target WSGI application as a function. This function will respond to a request by dealing a hand of cards and then creating a JSON representation of the card information. The deal cards function deals the next group of cards from the deck. The OS environment can define a hand size environment variable to change the size of the deal. The global deck object is used to perform the relevant processing. The status line for a response is a string that has the numeric value and phrase for the HTTP status of OK. This can be followed by headers. This example includes the content type header to provide information to the client. The content is a JSON document that the bytes for this document are encoding using UTF-8. Finally, the document itself is the return value from this function. For demonstration and debugging purposes, it's helpful to build a server that runs the WSGI application. We use the WSGI reference module server. There are good servers defined in Verkzeug. Servers such as GUnicorn are even better. Let me remove these comments and include them in code. Once the server is running, we can open a browser. Type this URL and let's click on Get. As you can see, this returns a batch of five cards. Superb! Each time we refresh, we get a different batch of cards. This works because entering a URL in the browser executes a GET request with a minimal set of headers. Since our WSGI application didn't require any specific headers and responded to any HTTP method, it will return a result. The result which you see is a JSON document 
that represents five cards dealt from the current deck. Each card is represented with a class name, rank, and suit. We can create web pages with clever JavaScript programs to fetch batches of cards. These web pages and JavaScript programs can animate dealing and include graphics for the card images. The WSGI standard defines an interface between a web server and an application. This is based on the Apache HTTPD Common Gateway Interface, or CGI. The CGI was designed to run shell scripts or separate binaries. The WSGI is an enhancement to this legacy concept. The WSGI standard defines the environment dictionary with a variety of information. A number of keys in the dictionary reflect the request after some preliminary passing and data conversion, which are listed here. We have the HTTP headers. These will be keys that start with HTTP underscore and contain the header name in all uppercase letters. Generally, the contents of a request are not only data that's required to create a meaningful response from a server. Often, additional information is required. This information generally includes two other kinds of data. One is the OS environment. The environment variables that were in place when the service was started provide configuration details for the server. This could provide a path to a directory that contains static content. It could provide information used for authenticating users. And the next one is WSGI Server Context. These keys start with the WSGI dot and are always lowercase. The values include some additional information on the internal state of a server that adheres to the WSGI standard. There are two particularly interesting objects that upload files and logging support WSGI.input and WSGI.errors. The return value from a WSGI function can be a sequence object or an iterable. Returning an iterable is the way a very large document can be built in pieces and downloaded via a number of smaller buffers. This example WSGI application does not check the request path. Any path can be used to retrieve a hand of cards. A more sophisticated application might pass the path to determine information about the size of a hand being requested or the size of the deck from which the hand should be dealt. There are three places where you can look for detailed information on the overall WSGI standard. For PEP 3333, you can visit this website. Also, you can find information in the Python standard library. It includes the WSGI ref module. This is the reference implementation in the standard library. Second is the Verxoid project, which you can find here. This is an external library with numerous WSGI utilities. It is used widely to implement proper WSGI applications. Also, you can browse this website for more information on JSON formatting of data for web services. Superb! In this video, we have learned to implement web services with Web Services Gateway Interface.